you first time I've looked at myself, Kara. Oh. You look gorgeous. Oh, no, thank you, Kara. Wait, did you really not look at yourself this whole time? That, that would be amazing. That's a feat for me, Kara. I appreciate that. Hi, friends. Welcome back to Really Famous. I'm Kara. This is part two with Danny Pudi, and you're going to get to know him on another level. We get all kinds of behind the scenes stories going in this part. If you missed part one, all good. You can catch it now or later where we get really personal about growing up without a father and having no idea why and then meeting his father later. So you're going to love part one as well. But let's dive into part two right now. I think I'm pretty selective about what I ask for. Okay. For sure. In my mind, I'm always like, I don't need to ask for that or I don't, I don't need to push for that. Uh, that's unnecessary. Ooh, this one is worth it. Um, so there's a, there's a little bit of that dance in my mind. Of, uh -huh. Is, is this worth the fight? Yeah. So you're not one of those people who is constantly calling your agent. Like, what have you got for me? I mean, you have steady gigs, so you don't need to anyway, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they might tell you sometimes if I'm feeling like what's going on with this, with a situation, I just feel anxious about it, but generally, no, I feel too guilty. I think I grew up with feeling guilty about all these things. I still feel guilty about, um, I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with like fame. I'm uncomfortable with all these these things. And I always feel like, it's, I wouldn't say I always feel like, sometimes I feel like some of this stuff is just can go away at any moment. And I'm not deserving in some ways. And uh, there's this, there's those elements there. Yeah. I grew up Catholic. I grew up with a, a lot of these sort of like, I would say traditional like elements of guilt in my yeah. in my life and and you know and being just very grateful and quiet um i think that to me is something i i took from my grandparents growing up is trying not to complain too much trying mm -hmm. to be very grateful about certain things um and yeah and I, I could see that now in my everyday life you know yeah. when i'm like having this battle about a donut <laughs> Right, right. Where uh, sometimes I'm like, it's just a donut. Just right, ask right. Danny. A small exercise is going to be really reap rewards though long term. You know that donut was the perfect little exercise for realizing yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually say things or ask for things more often. Yes. So fame, yes. you said you're yeah. not comfortable with fame. So what, like, are, so people recognize you, I'm guessing, right? Is that like, is it people who recognize you all over? Is it the things that you get from being famous? Like, what is it about fame that makes you uncomfortable? Mm. I don't know. I, I think it's, I love, um, I love being able to connect with people through art. I think that's like, a gift that I didn't realize how rewarding it would feel. Uh, so that's something to me that is like, just wonderful. So if I meet someone and they're like, Hey, I saw this episode of community mm -hmm. and uh, me and my best friend are just like you and uh, your best friend. And we're, we connect with Troy and Abed and we were going through this difficult time in school or with isolation and you helped us get through it. And that to me feels like, Oh wow. Profound and wonderful and unexpected. And um, I feel just very, very grateful for that, you know? But sometimes I do feel caught off guard when I'm just like um, recognized on the street with my kids or something. It just, it's an unusual feeling and I don't know how to handle it sometimes. And this is another thing my wife has helped me with where people will say things like, oh, you look familiar. And I don't know what to say back, you know? Uh, you know? Um, and and I think it's all part bundled with my childhood of like I don't want to feel special. I I, I want um, you know, but at the same time, it is uh, I I guess I have to get better about it of of recognizing that it's just part of my job. You know, is mm -hmm. that I get to 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 connect with people in their living rooms, and you know, I I think part of me is always just like. Uh, how do I handle that? I don't know, especially with my kids. I don't know how to make it normal. I mm -hmm. want them. I want them to feel like this is normal. Um, and so, I, usually, you know, it's it's just me building up the story in my head of like, how do I behave in this situation? I just want to make sure that um, you know that I'm that I'm I'm doing the best to be kind and see people. Uh, but at the same time, it, it's it's it can be odd when you're just like you know. Um, 
at the dentist and someone recognizes you and your mouth is open, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they start you asking know? you questions. Like, I'm vulnerable. I'm right. vulnerable right now. You know? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe people get comfortable with that uh, eventually. I don't know. I don't know. I so don't I, think... I, something I, uh, Look, I can tell you, uh, my show is really famous. So I've interviewed a lot of famous people. And I can tell you that by and large, I don't, I don't know many people who have gotten comfortable with it. I mean, some more than others. And I've, I've heard from a lot of people that, like you, where they appreciate the fact that it exists or else they wouldn't be doing what they do, right? They wouldn't be able to. Mm -hmm. um, but I do, I don't think any, I don't really can't think of anybody who's purely comfortable with it so but on top of I feel like for you too because you don't like to right you, you want to be just right all the time so it's like a double yeah. it's one yeah. pressure on top of the other so I could see where it would be super uncomfortable I'm going to turn it to one of the things like that you like about it which is not as profound as the example you just gave me but so I was watching community and I'm talking to my friend Josh Miley about it because Josh loves community and he's just like right. The paintball episodes, the paintball episodes. Uh, so I, okay, that is such joy. So I watched one last yeah. night. I watched the season one paintball episode with my son. And yes. oh. I mean, just pure joy for both of us. So yeah. that feels good, right? Uh, that you know that people yeah. from your art are just dying, laughing, appreciative, right? Yes. Uh, yes, I mean, I really feel, uh, and so we actually, uh, well, I'm glad, I'm glad you were able to connect over that and watch it. That's, yeah. I would say top three episodes of community for me all time. That one paintball. Oh, episode. The first one or that, or the first one, okay. the first one. second one is amazing too. But the first one was just like, I felt like our world was now like, what is even happening here? We're doing slow motion shots of me jumping off a wall. Um, Justin Lin directed that episode. And I just remember him setting up the shot for me to like do this slow motion jump off a wall as I was shooting, Yes, uh, you know, and then I say, you know, come with me if you don't want paint on your clothes. Um, and I just, I just, I, I couldn't believe we were able to, to get away with it. That's, I felt like we were getting away with something and, and just seeing the technical aspect of the shots we were trying to create within a comedy, an ensemble comedy. I, I was, I was getting to live, you know, like my, um, I just felt like a kid, you know, I was like watching action movies, but also now being in an action movie, but at the same time laughing with friends and it kind of was hitting all those, those spots. So, uh, I watched community with my kids, all this being said, I was, I was watching community with my kids for the first time over the pandemic as well. And it was just wonderful. And I hadn't seen it in a long time to watch it through their eyes this time too. And, and to be able to relive some of those moments and, um, and see how excited they got uh, in some of these moments. It was like, it felt really, really special. So yeah, I'm very, very thankful for that. And um, to be able to share something like that with people and uh, that fe truly feels like such a gift, yeah. especially right now to uh, just kind of bring some joy into people's lives for sure. Yeah. Okay. So your kids, what did they like, were they weirded out? Were they impressed? Did they look at you any differently when they were watching or did they kind of remove themselves from the fact that that's dad? I think a lot of this is just truly based on uh, how wonderful of a parent my wife is, is that they're not weirded out at all. They're just sort of like, oh yeah, that's, that's dad. Uh, so what were you doing there? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now let's go watch something else. Like dad, go make us some waffles. You know, I think there's like a, it's, it's, it feel it's very normal to them. Uh -huh. It's kind of what I do. I try to show them stuff. They've been on set. I show them pictures of being on uh -huh. set. You know, um, oh, that's cool. Of them yeah. on set when they were little, when they were babies. Yeah, so when they were babies, they were born um, in the middle of season three of Community, and um, so I have some photos of me bringing the babies to set and the cast members. Um, we have this Halloween episode, and it's pretty great. There's a bunch of us. Uh, I'm where Donald and I are dressed as Calvin and Hobbes. Um, there's like some other, yeah, and all of us are holding the baby with their, when they're babies, and and. It's just like this odd photo of the kids, uh, but it's beautiful. And I think it helped kind of like put perspective to uh, my job, my work, the show, yeah. who they are. And like, um, you know, and like, you know, for instance, the Russo brothers held our baby shower, the, who are the directors of community. Okay. And so there's, we're still very close as a group. Um, and so I think it's, it's normalized it. We go to Joel McHale's house quite a bit. Okay. Um, still and, uh, or then he's still, yeah. Still. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. There? 
he's got a pool, which, <laughs> which over the last year he's let us use his yard. Um, and that was like a huge gift. Um, and yeah, he's just, um, it, it, that's been awesome for him. And, uh, his family has just been, you know, just wonderful about giving us like, uh, I don't know, just like another family. He's been, we've been to his house for new years, a number of years. So I think we have this kind of like true set family that's kind of led into a real life family. So I think that makes this all not feel super unusual for them right. when they watch the show, because they know some of those people, they know the people personally, you mm -hmm. know, and it just kind of feels like, uh, like we are just in our living room, you know, like right. we're, you know, doing a regular dance show. So that's, it's been really cool to, to yeah. see it again, but also it's been, a, it's been funny rewatching episodes and being like, okay, this one's maybe not so appropriate for you or this one is, or I realize I have to explain, right. oh, I got to explain right. this, this meta stuff here, which is the grown up fast, the grown up real fast. Yes. But when you think about it, I think a lot of us watch TV shows that were a little bit too advanced for us with some of the content anyway. So it's like, Hey, this is just, the kids have been doing this for a long time, but I know what you mean. I don't well, sometimes get into certain episodes with my kids. I'm like, you know, maybe we'll just skip to the next one. <laughs> I'll look at the beginning. I'll see at the top left where it'll say like, okay, what are, what's some of the content warnings that I have to think about before? We definitely had to skip the STD fair episode. Uh -huh. My wife and I were like, Oh, okay, let's skip that, that one. Right. There's a few of them where we're like, yeah, oh, you know. Right. Um, just not ready for their, I know they're going to ask questions. They're, they're just incredibly inquisitive, both my children. And mm -hmm. so they're, they're going to ask, you know. Right. And I, in my head, I have to be like, okay, am I ready? Am I ready? No. Uh, so, yeah. Maybe in a couple of years. They're still, you know, not quite ready. Yeah, yeah. So I put it on social media yesterday. I was like, you know, uh, just booked Danny, you know, and uh, any questions or whatever. So I did have a bunch of fan questions come in, but I am going to tell you just one reaction that I got, which was a lot okay. of people were so appreciative of Abed and like just how you being on camera representing him in that way. And people have such a warm feeling about him. And I don't, this really isn't even a question. I just wanted to say it and I'm sure you've heard it a million times over, but that probably makes you feel pretty good, right? That you you know that people really are appreciative and respond to him as a character. I yes, yes. I think it meant so much to me to play Abed. Uh, I I think Abed is just such a wonderful character, and to be able to play someone that is so unique and that hadn't been seen in television in many ways before, I took that very seriously, and I really wanted to make sure that I was doing the best I could um, to to make sure Abed was not a caricature in any ways mm -hmm. and wasn't taken for granted. And um, so to be able to, to connect with people and that, uh, it, it feels really, really good. You cool, know? Yeah. cool. And yeah. um, I just want to touch on Mythic Quest too. So now you're mm -hmm. on Mythic Quest and that's, it's, yep. so you did two seasons already. Is there a third season? Am I getting my facts yes. wrong? Yes. Okay. There, uh, we haven't started it yet, but yeah, we're about to start season three pretty soon here. Cool. So that feel, how does yeah. that feel that you went from? Because I wonder too, after something like mm -hmm. Community, are you? Did you kind of worry like this is never going to happen again, or no? Like meaning? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to put words in your yeah. mouth. Yeah. No. Um, I think we knew something. It was special. I think you know. I feel fortunate because I think we knew it was special when we were shooting it in many ways. So there was this sort of, and we were frequently almost canceled. So I think there was this idea nice. that like, this this shows we're having a great time, but this is not gonna last. So there was always this feeling of like, let's just go out with a bang and, and have as much fun as possible and be as creative and just see what happens, right? So that, that feeling like really kind of spilled into the show and the performances and how we were on set. It just felt like, let's just, Let's just see what else we can do here um, because it really felt like we were doing something new and different and exciting. And I just knew sitting around that table with everyone around the table, it was just such an incredibly talented group that I couldn't believe I was sitting with this, this mix of, of um, each of them were just, uh, just everybody around the table, just brilliant yeah. people. Um, and so, yeah, there was this idea when it was ending many times that, this is probably never going to happen again. Um, you know, which is like a bummer in some ways, but also kind of like, Oh, like, wow, cool that it's, we got to do this thing, yeah. you know? 
So yeah, I, I, and then Mythic Quest came about actually because Megan Gans, who was a writer on Community, she wrote the bottle episode, for instance, in the uh. first uh, in Community. Um, and she had contacted me about this role in Mythic Quest that she was like, I think you'll enjoy playing this character. It's not like Abed. He is very different. He's kind of a villain. Uh -huh. He is uh, sort of this manipulator. Uh, and I was like, I'm in. This sounds amazing and exciting. And I, I love Megan. And I think she's just an incredibly talented writer. And and it's the Always Sunny in Philadelphia team. And I've, I've always loved their sure. comedy and what they do. So I thought this would just be something really cool to dive into. And it's been that. It's been a wonderful experience. The ensemble is phenomenal. Um, it's the same thing. It's like, we're not, I'm not looking around a table this time. My character tends to be sort of this outsider. So I look at everybody usually through plexiglass or through um, these long walk and talks, but it's a wonderful ensemble. Right. Um, and it, it feels very special too within this group. And, you know, we were able to film during the pandemic, which also felt special because I felt like we were trying new things and creating. And I think a lot of that is because of Rob McElhaney and, and Megan Gans really, um, you know, taking big risks during this time and being like, we have a pretty cool special bunch. And, um, I think they, they have a lot of trust and they put a lot of trust in their actors. So. It's been really, really special. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just thankful we get to go back uh, soon and For sure. see what else happens. Yeah. Yeah. Another shout out to another friend. I was talking to my friend Beth before we jumped on today. And she was like, okay. my sons are upset. She's like, who are you talking to? I said, Danny Pudi. He, she said, oh, my sons are obsessed with Mythic Quest. So. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Nice. There you go. Um, how do you feel when you're not working? Like, especially, I mean, with or without the pandemic, is that challenging for you as a creative person and somebody who wants everything to be just right yeah that's been that's been a challenge for me always i think always. is what do i do in my downtime what do i do with downtime you know running ends up being a lot of it i end up diving into to that running and and reading and and like trying to like you know trying to find ways to be at peace as is really that's been a challenge for me. I'm also like, I love people. I love being around people. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I, I feed off people's energy. I like that. And so that's, it's definitely been a bit of a challenge for me over the last couple of years to, to not have that. I will say I've been fortunate because I've had work, creative work to dive into. And I just realized how valuable that is for me to be diving into a character, exploring a story. Storytelling for me is really, um, it just feels very purposeful. It just always feels like, uh, like I, I love diving into a story and then what, that could be reading or it could be literally working on um, a character, you know, um, like in Mythic Quest. And um, so, yeah, but yeah, it is yeah. definitely challenging for me to rest. Yeah, yeah. I get it. And yeah. as an actor, like that's just the nature of it, that you're going to have these periods where you're not working and you yeah. can go from like not zero to 60, but 60 to zero kind of. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's always tricky. I mean, I, I think, I think I know it. I could feel when I'm like, okay, it's been like three or four weeks. Uh, I need to create something. I need to yeah. create. I feel like I, I feel like that. I got to do something. So, you know, that could be anything. It could literally be like, okay, I'm going to go and I need to go like make a, 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 a caramelized leek tart. I need to create something. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just made one. It was really good. It was really oh. good. Um, I just found a recipe, but I think like I have this sort of like, I got to do something I got to, uh -huh. you know, um, and that helps me kind of like, you know, in, you know, in my everyday life. But I, I think a big part of it too, is just, is me running. I know if I run or if I get some exercise in the day, mm -hmm. I know that also is like, right. Like, you know, like a brain bath feels really good. Yeah. Plus you're outdoors and there are studies that say like not only being physically active, but being active outdoors in nature. If you can get yourself into nature, that's like a really calming thing. That's it. Trees. I like will look at yeah. trees. I need to like just look at a tree and be like, that thing is there. The tree is still there. It's like, oh, that feels good. You know, it's grounding for you. Yes, I yes. totally get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh shoot! I just was gonna ask you something. I completely lost my train of thought. I'm gonna have Running. to skip it, I guess. Well, leek tart. I'll send that... you the recipe for the leek... tart. Oh yeah, send the me the recipe for the leek yeah. tart. <laughs> Your wife is yeah. sounds amazing. And also, I just want to jump back to the fact that 
I'm so interested in the fact that you chose her as a life partner because mm -hmm. she is bringing out all these things in you that aren't necessarily your comfort zone and your mm -hmm. default, but they help you grow into who you're appreciating you're becoming. Mm. Which is very, that's a very interesting thing to know about yourself, like mm. that you mm. opted into that instead of opting out. It's a healthy thing is what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I like, it's funny. I, it's, um, I have a very uh, vivid memory of our first meeting, my wife and I, and in it, she's just sitting in a chair very comfortably and she's very quick to laugh and quick to smile. And in that, like, that's kind of like my memory of her right away is how grounded she was and how that, and that, that's just like a good feeling in me. And I think I knew right away, I was like, oh, I don't have that. Yeah. Like, I don't, I want to be around that more. Like, I felt good, you know? So anyways, but that's, I think it's kind of part of that where there's something intriguing about it, but also just feels really good to be, to be near her it just does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. And like I said, mm -hmm. it's just my therapy view, my therapist perspective is that that is a healthy thing that you sought that out. And even though, right, it's not your natural inclination, you saw it as a good thing for yourself and you're going with it, growing with it. So not shutting it down, you know, the, the mm. fact that she's teaching you how to be this way. So bravo for you and oh. bravo for her. <laughs> Thanks for making me realize that. Uh, <laughs> again, these are things that I feel maybe I yeah. can feel these things. I don't, I can't necessarily put them into words, but that's, um, I think I feel that around her for sure. Yeah. How would you describe yourself? So, you know, I've been taking all these personality tests, like Enneagram and all those things. Yeah. I've, um, uh, and I think, uh, Myers-Briggs, I think I did that one too. And I forget which one's which, but I did the one where I'm a seven. I think that's the Enneagram. Yeah. The Myers-Briggs is four letters, four initials. Yeah, I feel like I'm like a campaigner. Is that right in there? ENFP oh, no, or something like that? Yeah, ENFP. Are you an EF, ENFP too? That's what I am. Are you an ENFP? Oh, yes. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a quick check here because I feel like I did that. That's called, is there a that's name to the that Meyer, one? That's the Myers-Briggs. Okay. Oh, are you saying that's what, what, is there a name to the Yeah, ENFP? was there a name to that one? I don't okay. know. So it's funny because I was, I was doing, when I was a therapist, I remember I kind of did a little career coaching at the beginning of that, and that was my favorite tool. And I had like a mini version of it. I probably was not authorized to even conduct the test, and I probably didn't have the license for the test. Or I didn't like that. But I was like, this thing is really cool. It's going to teach yeah. people about themselves. So I would give it to them. And so I think I had the mini version. I don't even know. But now it's funny because it's become popular again. And that was years ago that I used that. But I do love that test. It's fun. Uh, do you learn okay. about yourself? You really do. So I'll I'll probably have to tell you afterward when I find out what I was. Okay. That'll be a, f a fun addition. But yeah, so in both of those, though, it was elements and qualities that I kind of was like, oh, it helped us. My wife and I'd be like, oh, yeah, understand each other's, you know, needs yes. and all that kind of stuff. It really does help with that. So for sure, I am an extrovert. I love being around people. Um, I love... Uh, I think with the seven, I'm like drawn to sort of new experiences and, and those kind of things. And, um, you know, I think in some ways my wife's a little bit more introverted, so it's kind of a nice balance, Yeah. you, you know, but I think when I, when I've been kind of looking through all these things, I've sort of realized how much I actually really also, I don't think I'm a full on extrovert. I think I am. There's some. I like to be alone a little bit mm -hmm. too. And I think I've, I've kind of realized that over time. I kind of like, after like being out and about and with people and new experiences, I really like a little bit of time to just kind of quiet and, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's been something interesting through this process too, to just realize like, oh, I actually really do like that. I like going for a run by myself. I like kind of going right. on a trail run or being, you know, in the woods or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's so weird, but I do, th I do think you can be both. I remember when mm -hmm. I took it, I was on the fence. I was like maybe one or two answers away from being an INFP. So that's an introvert, right? Versus extrovert okay. ENFP. But I think the same thing. So I, it's funny because as I get older, I find myself being more of an extrovert. I've always mm. been an introvert in a way. Like I've always liked my alone time. I like to do things by myself. I'll, I'll go places. I'll go, I'll travel by myself. I mean, I don't really do it any, anymore now with, 
kids and my husband, but yeah. I like to do things by myself. I like to be on my own, but at the same time, I love being with people. So I think you can be both. I think they're just two sides of it. And I they totally can agree. Yep. Yeah. I agree. I like nothing more than traveling than going eating alone at a restaurant. Love it. Yeah. It's like, it's <laughs> and I think it's a little bit of that. That feels like really good to me, you know, like being in a new place, but also being by myself with a book. In a, yes. in a cozy little place that feels really nice yeah love it love it yeah okay so that so you would describe yourself as all okay all of those things i think that's good that's plenty of what you said and then how do you think your wife would describe you remind me what her name is again bridget bridget okay so how would bridget, bridget. describe you oh okay that's a, good, that's a good question danger danger daniel um <laughs> <laughs> I think she would say, yeah, I'm gregarious. Uh, she might, she definitely like, she'll be like, you're a seven, you know, you love new adventure. You love travel. I love travel. Um, I, um, I, I think I'm drawn to the, to sort of uncomfortable new experiences. I'm okay with being like, let's get on a flight and go here. And then like, like take, you know, go to a different time zone. And then, you know, where, I'm probably, uh, I think she would say in some ways, I'm a little bit more restless than she is, uh -huh. you know, so I've had to work at that. I think she, I think she would say, I hope she would say that, uh, <laughs> that um, I, um, I love, I think it's important to be kind to people and I, I love, I appreciate kindness. I think she'd say too, I'm sensitive. Um, I tend to be a little bit more, just more sensitive, I, I think. Um, and I, I have, you know, that's something I've, I've learned from her to kind of like not take things as personally, um, you know, um, I, yeah, I think she would say like, I'm definitely like drawn to, I, I think we have a very clear division in some of the, the, the TV shows we watch. So she would say like, you're definitely more into like sci-fi and that kind uh -huh. of genre and fantasy. You like the fantasy world elements, uh, where she's drawn way more into like indie romantic comedies, you right. know? And she'd be like, I definitely like to cry more than you do. She would probably say that. I'd be like, I completely agree there. <laughs> <laughs> you're well, you're more comfortable experiencing raw human emotion than I am. Um, I'm more comfortable um, experiencing raw human emotion if it's through the character of Jon Snow in Game of Thrones, yeah. like that kind of thing, you know. Right, so, right. It has to be couched in that other yeah, atmosphere. Uh, but I think she would probably say that I um, love to laugh and love to make people laugh and we have a good time laughing with each other and I think that's kind of where definitely we both have a, uh, a common thing there right okay and then if you can do a little something for me for social media so just like look at the camera and you can say hi it's Danny Pudi I just talked to Kara and whatever whatever strikes you it's all you right. whenever you're ready and then and then do I say uh, follow or anything like that or check us out or what, what do I say? Uh, yeah, you can say something like yeah. that after. That would be good. Okay. And how, where, what's the, what are the channels or what's the. Um, oh, so you don't have to, I don't even worry about all that. I'm just going to go okay. on social media. So they already know that I'm there. Oh, okay. So okay. wherever they're watching, they're going to see. see. So I just want you first to have time a I look at myself, Kara. Oh. You look gorgeous. Oh, no, thank you, Kara. Wait, did you really not look at yourself this whole time? That, that would be amazing. I did for a while, uh, in the beginning, but now okay. it's just first time in a long time. And then, cool. which is really, that's a feat for me, Kara. I appreciate that. That's great. Because I did the same thing. I was totally engrossed in what you were saying. So that's a good thing. It's a good sign. I like oh, that. Oh, good. We did it. Okay. Uh, hey, how's it going? I'm Danny Pudi. I just talked to Kara. We had a really good time. I tried not to be self-conscious and stare at my hair or my face. For the most part, it worked out. Anyways, I had a really fun time. And I'm um, just talking about life. Don't forget, you can catch part one with Danny where he really tells me some things about growing up and how it affected who he is today and his relationships and so much more. Um, it's really fascinating and you're really going to like him even more than you probably already do right now. So I put a link in the show notes, very easy to click on. Make sure you're subscribed to Really Famous, tap that bell so you're notified when I drop a new video, which is usually about twice a week. And uh, please drop a comment, let me know what you thought of Danny, what we talked about, really famous in general, me, questions for me, whatever, comment, I read them, and I will get back to you. Leave a like if you like this video, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. I'm Kara.